Hello, I'm Mr. Gigabytes, and this is Gigabytes Technology. What we're doing today is um, breaking my recording schedule a little bit. That is because on one of my last videos, the video that we, where we made the composite video cable, I discovered there were other problems with the uh, with my Commodore 64, in particular with the video. It related back to a frequency crystal, uh, the Channel 3 frequency crystal specifically, and possibly the VIC-2, and possibly uh, it needs a recap. Well, to further complicate matters, my board is a revision A board, which means it has a lot more capacitors to uh, to redo than some of the later boards do. Uh, it's a bigger board. It's got more chips on it. It's got more more to go wrong with it, really, if we're being honest. The original plan was to repair the board, get it all nice and wonderfully functioning, and pull it out and replace it with the individual computers uh, uh, C64 Reloaded Mark II. With the board being the way it is uh, and uh, all the work that needs to be done, I've decided to, to skip ahead and get the uh, individual computers board into it, the, the Mark II. So that is what we are going to do today so that I have a uh, working Commodore system and I can take the other board and, and troubleshoot it and uh, recap it, uh, socket some chips, that type of thing at a later date. One of the things that is different about the Mark II Reloaded is that it uses a 12 volt power supply. Now, I went ahead, I went through all my 12 volt power supplies and I, I I picked one out. It needs about one amp of power unless you're going to use like a, a, a super CPU uh, with it or anything like that. I will eventually get at like a two or a three amp power supply for it just in case that I, I need to do something like that. But here's the thing. Here's a caveat for everyone. The one, the power supply that I picked out that I really like that looks like a uh, Commodore power supply. This is a, uh, says it's a 12 volt DC, one amp, tip positive, which is exactly what we need to run our, our Mark, Mark II Reloaded. However, there's a problem. So we're gonna take our multimeter here, plug that into the end. So positive, positive lead goes here, negative lead goes here. I'm getting a voltage reading of 15 and a half volts. Now I've checked this. This is just a cheap multimeter. The, the readings could be off. So I double checked it with a couple of others and they read the same thing. We're getting 15 volts off this power supply, which means this power supply is no good. I am not going to run this with my brand new uh, Mark II Reloaded. So I have a different... Uh, and this one isn't as nifty, but it'll get the job done. It is also a 12 volt, one amp power supply, but it's got an exceptionally long cord. And uh, that's kind of a good compromise for me. So, so we'll set that aside for now, because right now we need to get into the nitty gritty of it and, uh, and pull, this, pull the, uh, the Commodore board out. Now this is the same Commodore that uh, I redid the uh, the keys on the keyboard with. Uh, so you you've seen this in one or two other videos. So we'll just put this up, put this aside for now. Right now, let's uh, get to get to the task of removing this board. Now, of course, I made that that composite video cable. Um, the Mark II already has a, um, uh, the Mark II already 
has an 8-pin cable, so I can actually use my 8-pin uh, cable on this uh, on this new board. But uh, what what might surprise you to know that I can also I should be able to use the the five pin cable that I made as well. This whole thing lifts out just like that. There we go. Let's set this up here. Now this has still got the original. This has still got the original shield here, and uh, I can tell. I'm not sure if it's showing up on the camera or not, but uh, uh, there are a lot of fingerprints all over this, uh, all over the bottom of this shield. I'm guessing that maybe it has been taken out once or twice before to be worked on, but, but yeah, I'm going to get a couple of static bags and let's wrap this up. There we go. That, uh, that fits like a glove. That's, that's really nice. So we're going to set this aside, uh, for now until I can get all the parts ordered and, and, uh, get it repaired. Let's take a look at the individual computer C64 Mach 2 Mark II Reloaded. So here it is. Now one thing I'm, I, I note immediately is that we're probably going to want the uh, uh, the panel here off of the other motherboard, and so yeah, let's uh, remove that real quick. Fortunately, fortunately, I just have to pull it out just a little bit. It's just a couple of screws, so let's pull this off here for a second. Now the holes will line up very nicely here. Everything should just fit real nice. Now, on a bread bin this old, I kind of wonder how, how well this is going to fit. Now, obviously, with the, the holes along the back are all the same, pretty much. So we've got uh, these holes are, are these holes line up back here. But because this is such a uh, this is a shorter board, I am not a hundred percent sure if I'm going to have anything supporting it on this front side. These are uh, very small feet um, replacement uh, feet for uh, devices, and I bought these for actually for the C64 Mini, if uh, if these pads ever fail. Uh, and, I, and these are a little bit too big for that, um, I realized. But, of course, I, I don't like to return anything. So what we're going to do is... Uh, so this is a uh, mechanical pencil used for marking lumber. Uh, very thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the location of the holes. If we're done, we'll just put that away. I'll set it off to the side, rather. Go forward with that. And uh, it, you may not be able to tell on the camera, but I've got three little marks there. So 
uh, at each of those mounting locations, I'm going to put one of these little feet. Pretty much right there. That's where where we want where we want the height to be. So those worked uh, those work perfectly. All right, let's go ahead and get these screwed down. I'm going to start with the middle. Because if either side needs to be repositioned, I can rock it back and forth. These are uh, zero insertion force sockets, otherwise known as zip sockets. When the, when the levers are flipped up, they are, uh, they're ready to receive those, those chips. Between PolyPlay and individual computers, I've got all of the chips that I need. Um, I actually ordered a, a, a Super PLA V4, which I don't need for this board. So we can set this one aside. I ordered that on by accident, thinking that I would need it for this board. But you never know when you're going to need it for anything else. So what I've got here, I've got a SID 8580 chip. And I, I just went with the, with a standard, um, I just went with the standard uh, uh, chip. I didn't go with a wind SID or an arm SID or anything like that. I could have very easily done that. I just didn't do it. Uh, this one from Polyplay, I believe. This is one of the CIA chips. 6526A. I believe this is the other CIA chip here. Oh, nope. This is 8500, which is the CPU. 6526 which is the other CIA, and this is the 8562R4, which is the uh, VIC-2 chip. Now, all told, this is the Commodore 64 Reloaded Mark II is almost, uh, almost $200. I spent almost another, well, 80-ish dollars on chips to popul populate the board. So this is a rather expensive upgrade. 6562R4 is what it's labeled on the, uh, on my invoice actually, is the VIC-2. But the chip is actually labeled 8562. And they're the same. So the notch on these chips goes Toward the lever side of the uh, socket. And it just drops in like that. You lever it down, it grabs the pins, and now we've got a socketed chip. The power LED is right here. And I can see a problem already. Keyboard connector is right here. I'll just plug that in real quick. Now let's see if we can uh, a little RF choke on here, a little knot. We might be able to tease out a little bit of uh, little extra cable there for this. And it looks like, yep, we are going to get it to reach. So there we go. So we undid the knot in that cable where the, uh, where the little RF choke is. And we were able to tease out just enough cable for it to reach. Let's set this up here. We move this RF choke all the way down to the connector so it's not touching anything. There 
lower the lever on the SID too, just so that it's not sticking up. It looks like it might interfere with the board there. Before we get too far, let's give this a shot. Now I said before that I've got the two different cables. This is the one I made. And it's just a composite video out. And this is one that I have. And this, of course, is the 8-pin connector. And uh, this should fit very nicely into the back. And sure enough, it does. But I'm not going to use the pre-made cable. Not right away, at least. Because we know this is going to work. The pinout for those five pins is the same for all Commodores. It's for all, well, for... Uh, for all Commodore 64s. So whether you have eight pins or uh, five pins, this should be the same and this should be able to plug in to our connector here. And sure enough, it's a nice fit. So we're gonna use this cable uh, to connect to a composite out to the TV. So let's get that uh, let's get that going here. Moment of truth time. And there it is. We have uh, we have the basic Commodore basic screen up. Excellent. Well, let's try a couple of things here. I've got a Starfighter joystick here. Go into control port one. Let's go ahead and switch that off now. Yeah, let's take a look at Jupiter Lander which is sort of the universal uh, test cartridge, huh? Here we go. Already I can tell this is a lot better than the, than it used to be. We're good as news, so. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.